who have an understanding. That's why Allah says, Ulul al-Bab, that these are the people that they will be able to see the signs who are grounded in knowledge. And this is how we are as believers. We don't see things from the surface. We look right. deeper below the surface. Just like this wall. If everybody look at this wall, they'll know that they'll say that this wall is solid and not moving. But with deeper knowledge and understanding, we know molecules never stop moving. So in actuality, this wall is actually in constant motion. It's just that the naked eye can't see it. But if you put a high power microscope on it and look at it, you'll see that the wall is constantly doing like this, you see? But that's because we have knowledge about it, you see? So therefore, this is the importance of knowledge. Now, I want to just go and just cover a few little surahs in the Quran and just give some little sound bites, some things that maybe we never really paid attention to. The first surah is Surah Al-Fatiha. Now, the beginning of any surah, there's two types of surahs in the Quran. Okay, this is the first thing we want to know. There's two types of surahs. There's what you call Meccan surahs, and they're what you call Medina surahs. Meccan surahs are all surahs that was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu in the time when he was living in Mecca. That was how many years? Anybody know? How many years did he spend in Mecca? 13 years in Mecca. Any surah that was revealed to the Prophet after the migration, this is called a Medina surah. Now, why do I say after the migration? Because there are a few ayats that was literally revealed to the Prophet while he had gone back to Mecca, but because it was after the migration, it is still considered as a Medina surah. This is just some knowledge to know, something about the Quran. So you got two types of surah, Meccan surahs and surahs of Medina. Now what's a little distinction? Well, one of the distinctions is that Meccan surahs were very short and to the point. Why? Because the pagans didn't have time to listen to a lot of dialogue. And that's why you got, well, also. By the token of time. In the insanity of your horse. You see what I'm saying? Why? Because Allah knew their psychology. They're not about to sit there and listen to nothing long because they're not trying to listen to the prophet anyway. So it's like, well, I'll send in the insanity of your horse. Well, in the Ladina, I'm in the Wamil Sala, you know what I'm saying? Try to get to the point real quickly. But when you see Medina Sures, now here come legislation. So Allah's Wajel gives long ayats. And then this is how you deal with inheritance. And this is how you deal with this and marriage and such and such. Why? Because the believers were, you know, they were ready to listen to all the injunctions. So that's what you see. Anytime you you see real short surahs, it's talking about, you know, the, these are Meccans. Long surahs and long ayats, these are ayats that are Medina. Another distinction is all the ayats in Meccan surahs are dealing with oneness of Allah, monotheism. Okay, meaning that Allah's whole purpose was to try to just to stab at the idolatry. They was committing a lot of shirk. You see, so Allah's jail was saying what? Do you not look at the uh, camel how it's been created? And then look at the heavens and how it's been raised up. And then look at this and then look at that and the heavens. Are, why? Because Allah is trying to show that look, all these things you worship in man, they're not doing these things here. You see, so Allah was trying to stab at the shirk of the pagans at that time trying to do what? Trying to remove out of them idolatry. Okay, so when we open up in every ayat or every time we get ready to read the Quran, it's very important that we say, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim We seek refuge in Allah from Satan. Now why do we do this? Because part of our deen is to do first and foremost, you have to purify the atmosphere. Okay, because then after you purify the atmosphere, then what do you have? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Now you're ready for Allah. You see, so the whole reason behind the system that Allah has used is that whatever we do, we have to first clean things out. That's why we say, La ilaha, and then illallah. La ilaha is negating, that you remove all the other gods, and then you put Allah there, illallah. So when we say, Ha'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim, we're removing all the evil aspects, and then now we, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, now we bring Allah. I'm trying to show us, and we'll see this shortly, that... The way that Allah has arranged things in the Quran, there's wisdom behind why he arranged them. He didn't just put things here just specifically for this reason or that reason or just scattered around. Every particular way, thing and every arrangement and every word and every, every letter, Allah has arranged them for a reason. And he puts that there in order to create that intriguingness in it. It's, it's intriguing. You say, okay, why does Allah do this? So therefore, he's actually coaching you or kind of t t tempting you to kind of look deeper into things. Because the book, the Quran was just a simple little fundamental book, then we wouldn't read it constantly. You see, how many books do you read like the Quran? Not no. one. 
Not one. You got one book that you might read twice or whatever. It's been in your bookshelf for years. But the Quran is the only book that you constantly read because it is no book like the Quran that you constantly read like that. It is only the Quran that you read constantly. And wallahi, I swear by Allah, and everybody witnessed this, you can read the Quran and read it and you can still read it sometimes and act like, man, I've never seen that verse before. You know what I'm saying? I have no where is that verse, man? I've been reading the Quran all day. It's like they just slip one in there. And your you know, in your book in particular. You see? So that's the way that Allah is. You'll never fill up on the Quran. You'll never be able to read it and be like, you know what, I ain't read it a few times, I'm good. You know, no. It's constantly giving you knowledge and wisdom, and that's the, the miracle of the Quran. So, in Surah al fatiha I just want to show something real quickly. We all know gender. I mean, not gender, but person. Like in English, people just very, and it's funny too, because I didn't understand this until like my senior year in high school shows you how the public school system was failing and we have first person which is I second person which is you and third person which is he and she right and then you got first person plural we and then second place in prison second person plural you all and then third person it's not an English lesson I'm just trying to you know get bring a point and then you got them and they you have to look at why a lot shifts Sometimes Now, if you look at Surah Al-Fatiha, and there's a lot of things in Surah Al-Fatiha, but I want to cover first things because we only got a little limited amount of time. But it's something you may not have thought about. But in Surah Al-Fatiha, Allah talks about himself in third person. He says, Al-Rahman Al-Rahim, the most gracious, the most merciful. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, all praise due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. Al-Rahman Al-Rahim, most gracious, the most merciful. Maliki Yomadeen, master of the day of judgment. This is all third person. Allah is, all, Allah is talking all about as though he's talking about someone else. Right. This guy is the most merciful, the most gracious. All praise is due to Allah. Lord of the worlds. The most gracious, most merciful. Master of the day of judgment. We're talking about him. That's third person. All of a sudden there's a shift. You alone do we worship and you alone do we ask for help. Why does Allah make that shift? He didn't say in him alone do we worship and him alone do we seek But everything else started out third person All of a sudden he shifts as though you're talking directly to him now There's a reason for that Does anybody know? There's a reason And all in the Quran you'll notice he makes this shift What is symbolizing Is that Allah is saying That all of those statements that you made prior to that point, you're praising him. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. al rahman Al-Rahim. Maliki Yawm din Praising Allah gets you closer. Our, all our prayers is nothing but praise. After you finish your prayer, you praise him some more. SubhanAllah. Alhamdulillah. The remembrance of Allah, the dhikr of Allah is the success. So Allah is saying that look In order to get close to me You start out by praising me Once you praise me now It's Woo. like you didn't get close enough To directly say to me You alone do we worship And you alone do we seek help You, you see so therefore Allah is saying You start out from the far And then you come closer By the more you praise Allah this is why our whole prayer is praise. It's all about Subhana Rabbi Allah, Subhana Rabbi Allah, Simi Allahu Liman Hamina, Rabbana Walak Al Ham. Our prayers is not like supplications. Our prayers is all glory. You start off praising Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greater. Then you start off, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. It's all about praising. So Allah said, once you praise me, the more you praise me, then you get closer and now you can talk directly to me. Okay? That's a point to pay attention to. Thank you. Another thing in Surah Al-Fatiha, when you say Yaqan Abdu wa Yaqan Asta'in, you are admitting something to Allah. So Allah is giving it. So you got to look at the little secrets that Allah give us in order to get a response from Him. When you call upon Allah and tell Allah something that you're doing that's righteous, you can supplicate to Allah by way of your righteous deeds. What do I mean by that? If you say to Allah, Iyak and Abu Dua, Iyak and Estain, you tell Allah, you alone do I worship and you alone do I seek help. You seek help to worship you. Now, first thing I want to mention is, if you're praying by yourself, why are we using first person plural? You see, what we say, Iyak and Abu Dua, you alone do we worship. Now, you could be by yourself. But you're still including the rest because this religion is not about you. It's about us. That's why Allah has it plural. Because Allah is forcing you to include your brothers and sisters in your prayers. 
all the time. Now what ihdin al sirat the mustaqeen? This ain't about you. It's about us as a community. Guide us to the straight path. Even if you by yourself, you still got to include the rest. That's a sign that whenever we pray, we have to pray for each other. Yes. Yeah. Allah is teaching us in the Fatiha the most surah that's pr- 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 the surah that's 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 mentioned the most is recited the most in our prayers is that.